So after reviewing the best selling car in the BMW lineup a few videos ago, it is time to review the smallest BMW in the lineup. This is the new 1 series. Now BMW say that it is an all new generation, but actually it is a very heavy facelift on the older generation, similar to what Mini have done with the new petrol powered Cooper. So let's have a look and see what this new generation is like and if it should really be called a new generation. Hello everyone, welcome to Everything Cars and More. This is the number one place to be for car news and reviews. Sit back, buckle up, let's go. So starting with the design at the front and it is more modern, sleek and sporty than before. To start with, we, the most noticeable change is the grille. It has reduced in size and is much sharper and pointier than before, unlike the big one in your face on the previous one. This gives the new 1 series a sporty look which suits this car much better. The grille will also get the iconic light up feature just like the new 5 series, 7 series and X3 for the next model year, and this will make it look more premium too. We also get an indent for the badge too, just like other BMWs. To go with this new grille, we also get a new set of headlights that are much slimmer than before and they also lose their angel eye design in favour for a dual line daytime running light, similar to the new BMW X2. Now, on this car, you will notice there are more changes related to the BMW X2 as we go round the car. Moving lower down and we get a reasonable central air vent which has a centre part in it, just like the recently reviewed BMW X3. And along the side of the front we also get side vents which has been made more pronounced with some gloss black inserts. Moving around to the side of the new one series and considering this is a new model that is based on the previous generation, there are actually a few changes to talk about, but I am going to start with what is the same. So all the lines and the overall greenhouse style is the same as on the previous generation car. What is new, though, is a set of curvier wing mirrors which help with aerodynamics, and we also get a different trim on the C-pillar that gives this car a new side shape. It makes this car look sleeker and like it is a saloon with this trim, and it also has the number 1 on it to show it's a 1 series, a bit like what the 5 series has with the number 5. To go with this new design, we get a new shark fin aerial on top, as well as some new wheel options, as well as colour options but these new wheel options are a lot more modern than before but are also probably a lot harder to clean too so the car validators out in the UK will be happy with that. Moving around to the back and there are some big changes to talk about. To start with we get a whole new rear end and this is completely different from the previous one. We get a new set of tail lights that look very similar to the new BMW X2 set. They have a dual design stem which I do quite like and it gives the rear a more interesting look. Because of this design, the boot opening has an all new design and on the boot we get a new petrol naming system, where BMW don't use the I lettering for the petrol cars anymore. Lower down we get a new bumper design which I am ok with but the parts I do question is why is it designed like that. For example, take the gloss black plastic panels. Why do they go so high up on the bumper and have a cutout in the middle which looks like it should be for a number plate? The side reflectors I do quite like and, but we also don't get any fake exhaust too which is another nice touch. Overall then the design does look more modern and sleek than before and this does give the car a younger more sportier look. Right let's have a look and see what engine and gearbox options you can have with the new BMW 1 series. So the engine range in the new BMW 1 series has been simplified from the previous version. You now can't get any diesel engines and there is now no manual option either. There are only 3 petrol engines available. Let's start with the base model. This is called the 120. This uses a 1.5 litre turbo engine with mild hybrid assistance and it produces 168 brake horsepower and it has a 0 to 62 time of just 7.8 seconds. It is front wheel drive and the power is sent through an 8 speed dual clutch automatic gearbox. The next engine is called the 123 
and this is an all new setup and a new engine that has been introduced to the 1 series. It uses a 2 litre turbo petrol engine with mild hybrid assistance producing 216 brake horsepower. This gives the car a 0 to 62 time of just 6.3 seconds and is mated to an 8 speed automatic dual clutch gearbox. Now it sends the power to all four wheels using the X drive system. Yes, there is another four wheel drive option for the 1 series. Now the final engine is the M135. This uses the 2 litre turbo petrol engine with mild hybrid assistance but the power has been upped to 298 brake horsepower and this reduces the 0 to 62 time down to just 4.9 seconds so it's very very quick. It also sends the power to all four wheels for an 8 speed dual clutch automatic gearbox. The price of the new 1 series starts at £31,065 which isn't bad considering for what you are getting. And I am very certain that after 6 months there will be some great deals on some X demonstrators too which will make it an even better car. Let's have a look at the interior. So moving inside the new 1 series and this is where it, the differences between the previous generation and this new generation end. We get a whole new interior design inspired by the new BMW X1. To start with we get the same dual screen setup taken from the X1 and this has the new iDrive 9 operating system which as I have said in the X3 review it is very easy to use and looks very modern. The only problem with this one is that in this car you don't get the iDrive controller. We will come back to that later. In front of the driver we get a new set of indicator stalks as well as a new steering wheel design taken from the new X1. This looks much more modern and much better than the previous steering wheel. But what I will say is that the rim does feel quite unnaturally thick. The rest of the dashboard design is new with this hidden air vent design and the plastic trim panels that light up in a similar way to how the colour bar does in the new BMW X3. This is a cool feature to have and on the Lovers model car which I am happy about. We also get some storage on the dashboard too as well as the centre console. Now talking of the centre console we get an all new design without the iDrive feature. And we also get a new toggle selector for the gear selector too. Now I am okay with this as luckily the BMW iDrive 9 operating system is very easy to use by touch as it has this new one layer system which I do like but it would just be much simpler as well as much safer to control it on the iDrive controller like what the X3 and other higher end BMWs have. The X3 has it so why can't the 1 series have it? To me it feels like they're cheaping out on areas that they can. The door cards are the same as before but have been slightly updated on the designs with new buttons and the trim panel has been removed on them. The seats are also new and have been taken directly out of the X1 and they are much comfier and more supportive over the old model seats. So a big improvement over the old one then. Let's have a look at the rear seats. So getting into the back of the new one series and really there is no surprise that it is the same as before in terms of legroom and headroom. A 6 foot person will fit fine in the back. There is one complaint though I have and that's these seats. Now they are thicker than the previous generations which I was worried about but they do have a deep cutout for your knees which does mean legroom is unchanged. But it is much easier than the previous ones to hit your knee on the seat so it is harder to get in and out of the car. Again just like the front the door cards have received the same treatment as they now do not have any plastic trim on but are, do have the same similar design as the previous model. To be honest in the back it does disappoint me somewhat because it does make it less dull in the back as the rear ones used to light up too. We do get some air vents though as well as two USB-C ports and an armrest. Right let's have a look and see what the boot is like. So opening the boots in the new 1 series and again there is no surprise that it is the same as the previous generation at 380 litres with the seats up. If you fold the seats down and it increases to 1200 litres. This is decent enough but there are rivals out there that do have better space. So in summary then what do I think of the new BMW 1 series? Well, considering it is just a very heavy facelift on the outside, I can see why BMW has decided to call this new 1 series an all new generation car. 
It feels new on the inside, has next generation equipment and better and more efficient but more powerful engines. It is a true BMW and it shows that the 1 Series has upped its game on this generation. In some areas it could easily beat its rivals. If you like this video please don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next video.